what's happening here, guys, is we have um, Ray Fawns, who's the um, head of the foundry here, cleaning a couple of the elements that um, Yuri has designed for the Isaac Witkin portrait. And these these elements are the are the brown wax, which we'll show you in a second when we pull it out of this pot. That will be part of the casting, and the red wax is part of the plumbing that we create to um, to distribute the bronze throughout the, the the casting. And we have to clean the wax because we've handled them with our hands, and and oils from our hands and from other other processes may have gotten onto the wax, which will inhibit the ability of the next the next stage, which is the shelling stage, to make contact with and. Um, create an imprint of the, the form we're trying to cast. So they'll dry for like an hour and a half and then um, we'll take them in there and, and um, stick them in the shell tank. So here we go with another one. Yeah. Is, this, is this one too... Um So, um, yeah, fantastic. So th these pieces were all screwed up by Katie Zazensky, an another sculptor working over here, who you'll see footage of um, creating the gating for this sculpture. Um, and each, each, each job we do here, we bring in a team appropriate for, for the piece of art that we're trying to cast. And um, that's what we've done again. It's a hands-on process. There's lots of, you know, automated ways to do things that um, that require replication of consistent activities. But in these sorts of castings and these sorts of um, for the kind of artists like Yuri is, you have to do it. We prefer to do it just by hand, to um, hands and eyeballs and brains and beauty. Nice. It's a really heavy-duty gating system you've got. Well, yeah. It's, um, we, want the, we want the piece to have an architecture built around it to prevent it from warping through the process. And Katie's put the, the heavier sprues in the center to make sure our metal gets enough head pressure to um, rise back up without being turbulent, but in a way that will consistently fill the forms and bring us up to the top of the cut here and through these vents. So how long do you want to dry that, Ray? Is 20 minutes enough? Yeah, 20 minutes should be fine. So that doesn't take that long. Does, do you want a fan on it or is it alright? It should be alright. It's better without a fan. Okay. Right. So, once your camera swung around, because we're about finished here, you'll see that the pieces that Katie has leaning up against the wall over there uh, the stage, are at the stage before of what we're doing right here. Which is, first Yuri gives us the patterns. As you can see with this head, this is Dear Isaac in, in, in a um, developmental form that hasn't been screwed that came to us straight from Yuri's studio like this. And this next process will be to go to Katie where it will be screwed, given the plumbing, to withstand the, the uh, forces of the process and also to, to distribute the metal throughout the, throughout the casting evenly and quickly. So great, let's get this guy over here. Now, a lot of the people who are watching this will know this process, but it's, it's always worth speaking about it, I think, because it's so, um, it's so kind of like primal in its, in its, in its um, tried and tested truths, you know? It's been pretty much done in some sort of similar way for you know, millennia almost. But part of we're talking about the gating and why it's done this way and why it's this heavy duty. But what you're going to see is we're going to go through the shell room and over the period of some weeks, we'll develop these ceramic shell patterns 
will make a mold of these forms in ceramic shell up to about, it'll be about a three quarters of an inch thick, the mold, which will encase everything you see here in a big white, sort of like a amorphous lump almost. And with that, we'll be able to then fire these individual pieces as ceramic objects and vitrify the ceramic shell and create a new ceramic object unto itself, but that actually contains all of this wax. So basically it's going to disappear. It's going to be disappear because we're going to, we're going to enter this ceramic object from the bottom, remove this, fire this whole piece, which, which we'll see, show you later in, in its ceramic form. This will heat up evenly and quickly and the wax will drip out the bottom. Once we've cleaned it and prepared it, we turn it over, sink it in hot sand and pour basically our bronze in, which will distribute throughout this pattern, rise to the top, exit through these vents into this cup. And once our metal has come into the cup from the top, we know we've filled our form. And you know, an hour later, we can break off that shell, destroy that shell, and discover the casting. After that, we have to remove all of these red pieces. And, um, and Yuri will get to work on preparing them for his portrait. That's only he can, because that'll be us over at that point. All right, here we are in the wax room with Katie Zazensky, the sculptor who um, is kind enough to mix her talents up into doing foundry work as well. And she is, at the moment, sprueing some of the Isaac Witkin sculpture that Yuri has brought to us. Um, to cast in metal and the sprue bars that we're looking at here basically consist of this it's a, it's a cord three quarter inch square piece of um, specially designed wax the wax has to be flexible enough to conform to any plumbing sort of changes any bendings we have to make to to get it to where we need to get it on the on the piece but also rigid enough to withstand the temperature you'd have in a, in a normal wax room where wax can collapse. Now the objective of this wax actually is to collapse. Once it has been introduced to the burnout kiln, this wax will be at that point surrounded by another ceramic mold. And the objective then for this particular piece of material is to liquefy and to exit, leaving a vacuum or a cavity in the mold the ceramic mold, which we will then fill with bronze. So what's happening here, like for instance, Katie has carefully constructed this tree, the eyeballs, eyelids, various elements of the, the larger form are here joined into one continuous flow chart almost that we expect the bronze to, once we've made the other mold of this, we expect the bronze to enter the top, run to the bottom of this, pull here, and then quickly rise up. Any, any turbulence being held at the bottom, any impurities being held here, to then to rise up through these forms, to follow these vents, to come all the way up and exit at the vents at the top and here, filling this cup with metal, and what we'll have at that point is a white object with a glowing eye of metal on its top, which will tell us that we've, we've um, successfully gotten our metal to travel as we wanted it to travel. And then about half an hour later when it cools, and we may cool it with water or throwing it in the snow, we can carefully knock off that mould and see how our casting has um, come out to perfection once again. So there you go. This is a, this is a cool looking thing, isn't it? So we'll have to care, when, once this is all turned to metal, which is what literally happens, we'll, we'll carefully remove each of these little sprues, these vents, so that the original form is, is maintained. And then Yuri will take them over to do his magic on. Okay. <clears throat> we'll talk about some of the tools that uh, she's using. Well, maybe Katie can talk about them. Um, so basically I'm just using a few little hand tools, like little um, spatulas, different sizes, um, putty knife to do my cutting, um, and uh, I've got my um, 
my welder, my wax welder, uh, a torch, and a couple of different pots of wax that are sort of half liquefied, um, half solid, and then uh, a pot of sticky wax. So um, in order to, to build the, the plumbing for the piece, um, I take the, the screw wax and um, in order to melt the two pieces together, heat both halves and then use some sticky wax to bind them. And um, then just make sure they're joined with the wax welder so that they've got a good bond. Uh, and make sure everything's smooth at the joints too. Um, because if there's any pits or any holes, um, shell could get in there and could disrupt the flow of the bronze. Um, so just make sure that's really clean and um, then I seal it to the, the piece the same way. I just heat up the ends and use some sticky wax and um, can put it on the piece so that the piece is then attached to the plumbing and um, that's pretty much it. What, what kind of temperature do you generally keep um, the wax at that you're using? This, um, to keep it at sort of like a mudgy wax, is sort of like a 260. Um, it's, uh, it's still solid, but underneath it's really soft, so you can kind of play with it a little bit, or if um, I need something a little bit more substantial, I've got harder and softer in there, um, just to sort of fill in gaps. Um, but it's mostly with the wax welder um, to, to, heat, uh, to heat and uh, weld the existing screw wax. The, um, that's the majority of it. So that's what's happening. Well, thank you. Yeah.